now. It's recording now. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Glick, and I work for the Idaho Human Rights Commission. Uh, we do several things here, which I will get into later. But first, I just want to introduce myself and my colleague, Rick. Like I said, my name is Lindsay, and I am an investigator with the Human Rights Commission. So I investigate claims of discrimination and harassment, which I will also talk about in more detail. And I speak Spanish as well. So I'm a bilingual investigator. If anyone needs assistance in Spanish, I can do that directly. We also offer interpreting services for other languages. And Rick, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Hello, yeah, I'm Rick Rhodes. I'm an uh, investigator for the Idaho Human Rights Commission also. I also mediate. And uh, really, that's about it. Um, yeah, um, I'm not bilingual, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we want to introduce um, what discrimination and harassment mean, and then we'll talk a little bit about what you can do if you experience that um, here in Idaho. So every Idahoan has the right to be treated equally at work, at school, where we live, and in public accommodations. So this means that people should not treat you differently based on where you come from or your religion or your sex. Um, several areas which I'll talk about in more detail. Public accommodation is a place like a store, a hospital, you know, anything like any, any place that the public is allowed in to do business. Yep. So I want to start out with an example of what would be considered sex discrimination. So that is someone being treated differently based on their sex or gender. Um, so in this example, uh, all three of these people that you see on the screen have the same job. They all uh, work cleaning office buildings in the evening. And the man who works there is paid $11 an hour, but the women who work there are paid $9 an hour. So I want you to think about that and try to decide, is that okay or is that bad? Why would the man get more money? So the answer is this is not okay. This is discrimination based on sex. The, the men and the women are doing the same job and they should be paid the same amount of money. What if the man is a manager or a supervisor? Yeah, so this is a great question. If the man actually has a different job, so he's not the one cleaning the office buildings with these women, he's the manager, then it's okay that he makes a different amount of money. It's okay for him to get paid more because he has these manager duties and other things that he does. So in that case, it is not discrimination for him to be paid more than the women because their job is different. Another example, um, imagine that these two men both see a, an advertisement for an apartment. And the first man, when he goes to see the apartment, to apply, he walks in the office and he's told, oh, we don't have any vacancies and they turn him away. Now the second man walks into the office and they tell him, yes, we have two apartments. Would you like to see them? Is this okay? No, this is not okay. <laughs> Now, we, we can't tell from these pictures um, what the reason might be, but because the first man has a head covering on, 
um, it, it might be that the person in the office um, assumes something about his religion or his national origin and is making a decision based on that. And that's not okay. So this would be an example of discrimination in housing, right? Not being provided the same access because of maybe religion or maybe national origin. So if I'm told there are no apartments, can I file a charge? Yes, maybe. <laughs> Oops, let me get down to the right slide, sorry. Um, so in this case, the man might not know that there really are apartments for rent. If he does know that though, then he has reason to suspect that there is discrimination and that is the reason he is not being offered an apartment. So for example, if he knows that someone else is being shown apartments, then he has that reason to believe that it is discrimination. For example, if there are really no apartments for rent, then he would not be able to file a charge because there's no reason for discrimination. Well, what if I'm not sure? What if I, I suspect that they're not letting me look at an apartment because of how I look? Well, anytime you have a question, you can just call us and we can talk through the situation. Um, sometimes there is good reason to believe um, and we can do a simple search, for example, and find out that there are still apartments for rent. And in that case, we would, we would help you file a charge. Um, however, if, if we look into it a little bit and we discover there really are no apartments, um, there would not be any reason to believe that it was discrimination. So always just give us a call if you have a question about what might be discrimination. Here's another example. In, in this example, we're talking about employment and trying to get a job. So these two women, we have a black woman and a white woman. Um, they both apply for the same job. And these women are friends in this example. And they know that they are applying for the same job. Um, but when the black woman goes to um, apply and um, get an interview, when she walks in the office and the people see her skin color, they tell her the position has already been filled. Now, without any other knowledge, it might be that the position is really filled. But her friend, the white woman, goes to the office and they accept her for an interview and they ask her to then start the position. So now we can see that there was probably discrimination happening because the black woman was told there's no job anymore and the white woman was told to interview and given the job. Is it okay to hire the white woman if she has more qualifications for the job? Yes. And this is where some of these issues become um, tricky. But if someone is more qualified for the job and the person is hired, then th we wouldn't have reason to believe that it was discrimination. However, in the example that I gave, the black woman was not even given an interview. And so um, she might still have reason to suspect discrimination based on her skin color. Um, ultimately, a, an employer can, can hire the person they want and they can hire someone with more qualifications, but they cannot make decisions based on skin color. Here's another employment example. Um, in this example, we have two men who work at a warehouse. Um, and the, the, man, the first man uh, has no 
additional needs. He can do the job. He moves the boxes from one place to another, no problem. The second man um, has, has an issue and he actually has a hand deformity. And so he can't carry the boxes in the same way that the first man can. However, if he uses a simple tool, um, a hand cart, for example, he can still move the boxes from one spot to another. And in this way, he can still do his job. So the company needs to provide him with that tool to allow him to do his job. This is called a reasonable accommodation. And employers must consider how to help someone with a disability to do their job. What if someone has a disability uh, you can't see, like maybe they're deaf or uh, maybe they're anxious or depressed or something? Great question. A lot of people have disabilities that we can't see. Um, they're not necessarily physical disabilities. And all disabilities are protected. So um, even if the disability is something like you mentioned, if they can't hear or if they have a mental disability, those would still um, be protected and, a, and a, an employer should still um, provide a reasonable accommodation to help them do their job if they need it. Now, um, if a person cannot perform their job, then the employer is not responsible to, to continue to pay them to do the job because they can't do it. For example, um, if a delivery driver um, becomes unable to drive for some reason, um, then he can no longer perform his duties and, and there might not be an accommodation to allow him to do that job. So now, what can we do about these types of situations? Um, all these examples have been where, where someone might experience discrimination or harassment. And in Idaho, these, these um, areas are protected. And so you have civil rights um, in, in these areas, in your employment, where you work, in public accommodation, which like Rick said earlier, is any business that you go to, um, a bank, a grocery store, wherever you go to, to do business and, and you're um, given something in return. Um, housing, such as your apartment or your house that you rent. Education, like your, your children's school or maybe you're going to university. Um, so in all of these areas, uh, we look at discrimination and we look at that on the basis of race, color, national origin, religion, and sex. Sex can include um, things like pregnancy and sexual harassment. So it is illegal to sexually harass someone at work or um, to treat them differently because of their pregnancy. Um, for example, if an employer finds out that a woman is pregnant and fires her because she is pregnant, that's not okay. Um, and then additionally, in employment, we can look at age discrimination, which is when someone is 40 years old or older and they feel that they have been treated differently because of their age. Disability, we also look at in all of these areas, um, except for education. That doesn't mean that you can be discriminated against because of disability in education, but there's another group that looks into that. So within the Department of Education, there is an Office of Civil Rights that can address that concern. So once again, you have protections and you should not be discriminated against or treated differently because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, 
sometimes age and sometimes disability, always disability in all those areas. So coming back to the Idaho Human Rights Commission and what we do, um, we are a neutral investigative agency. So that means that we don't represent um, a business, for example. Um, we also don't represent a person who is complaining against the business. So we're a third party and we try to figure out what happened and prevent discrimination and harassment or stop it if it is happening. So what are the ways that we can do that? What, what do we do? Um, in some cases, such as a public accommodation situation where you might have an issue at a business, um, we can do what we call informal resolution. Informal resolution um, might, might look like um, someone who has an issue with, uh, for example, handicapped parking at a gas station. Um, now this is actually um, a situation that happened. Someone called us to report that a delivery truck was blocking the handicapped parking at a gas station repeatedly. And it prevented this person who, who needed to use that spot to park. And we called the, the owners of the gas station and spoke with the manager. And the manager was very helpful and took several steps to prevent the delivery drivers from parking in the handicapped parking spot in the future. So in that way, we resolved the issue um, to keep it from happening again in just a, a couple quick phone calls and, and the issue was resolved. So that's a great outcome. Um, another thing that we can do is what we call a charge of discrimination. A charge of discrimination can be filed here in Idaho, but also on a federal level. So it can be a federal charge and a state charge at the same time. A charge typically involves an investigation where we look into the matter and get information from both sides to figure out what happened and if that thing that happened was discrimination or harassment. Another um, thing that we can do is called mediation. And instead of doing the back and forth and the investigation, we might be able to bring both parties together and come up with a um, solution or some type of settlement to resolve the matter more quickly. So what questions might you have? Rick is gonna ask some questions that um, commonly come up with this presentation. Well, first, I, do I need an attorney to file a discrimination charge? You do not. Um, you can get an attorney and, and you would be within your right to do so, but it is not required. You can communicate directly with us and, um, and it's not necessary to have an attorney. Is what the Human Rights Commission does, is that the same as going to court and suing an employer? Good question. It is not the same. A lot of people want to sue uh, their employer for an issue. Um, this is different. Um, if you want to sue your employer, you actually have to, in Idaho, do this process first. So if you have an issue about discrimination or harassment, come to us first and maybe we can resolve it, which is the goal. If not, and you want to continue on to the court system, you can do that afterward. So what happens at the end of an investigation? The, what happens at the end depends on the outcome. So in some cases, we find what we call probable cause, which means we think, yes, discrimination happened in this case. And if, if we find that we think discrimination occurred, then we try to um, resolve the issue between the parties. And um, up until this point, like I said, we're a neutral agency. We don't represent each side. 
But if we do find probable cause of discrimination, then we become um, more of an advocate for the person making the claim because we think that some wrong has been done to them. And so then we represent them um, and try to facilitate some sort of um, resolution or settlement after, after the case has been um, decided. So you'll represent me only at the end, after the investigation finds cause? Only at the end and only if the commission finds probable cause. Otherwise, we don't represent anyone. So it's not that we are representing the business. It's not that we're representing you. We are just looking into the situation. Um, if at the end of the investigation, the commission decides we don't think there was anything illegal that happened here, then the case is dismissed from the commission. At that point, if you want to pursue a court case, you can do so. Do I need proof? Proof is very helpful, <laughs> but we realize that there's not always proof in every situation. So the best thing is to provide as much evidence as you have. And that might be witnesses who have seen the behavior that you are reporting. Um, it might be text messages. Um, for example, if, if a um, worker is being harassed by another coworker or by a manager and they're sending inappropriate or racial um, text messages or maybe sexual harassment and they're um, sending private messages to the person, those messages should be kept as evidence and send those to us. Emails, anything you have. Okay, my manager is very mean and yells at everyone. Is this illegal? This is a very unfortunate situation because no one wants to work in a place that is uncomfortable and where they're being yelled at and there is no respect. Unfortunately, it's not illegal to be rude um, and to yell. So if the manager is treating all the workers like this, um, for our purposes, it does not count as discrimination because he or she is treating everyone the same. Discrimination has to be different treatment based on something like your skin color or your religion. So if, if the manager treats all women and all men and all uh, Hispanics and all non-Hispanics, everybody the same, it's not discrimination. What if I'm unsure if I'm being illegally harassed? You should call us. We're always happy to take questions and talk about the situation. We can explain um, if it does not sound like harassment, why it doesn't. Um, and if it does sound like harassment, we can guide you to the process to file a, a complaint. So this is how to contact us. If you have questions about discrimination or harassment, if you want to report something that's happening in your work and find out um, if you should file a charge, um, if you have a housing question or an education question um, or a public accommodation question like going to a business, um, call us at this number or visit us at humanrights.idaho.gov and there's a spot to submit an inquiry where you can fill out information send it to us and we'll contact you about that. If you don't speak English well and you need an interpreter, you can call this number and ask for whatever language you need. And we can use a telephonic interpreter to um, have a conversation with you. And, and that's free. You don't need to worry about paying for an interpreter. All right. So if you have any questions, please contact us and, and we'll be here. 
Thank you so much. Um, I had one question. Does it cost any money to do these inquiries? Great question. It does not cost any money. Um, it doesn't cost any money to fill out an inquiry. It doesn't cost any money to call us. And, and it doesn't cost any money, even if we file a charge and we go through the whole process Oops. all the way to the end, um, this is accessible to anyone. And you don't need an attorney and you don't need to pay for the service. Great question, thank you. Of course, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Thank you all.